The Reef Therapy Podcast is powered by ICP Analysis. If you'd like to win a free saltwater ICP analysis kit and a freshwater analysis kit, all you have to do is leave a comment down below using the hashtag what's in your water. If you're listening to the audio only version, head on over to YouTube and you can enter in the comment section there. ICP analysis will test over 50 elements down to parts per trillion. These tests can also be used to see if there's any undesirable elements in your aquarium as well. Register your aquarium on the ICP analysis app, fill your sample, place it back into the bag, slap on that included postage, and have your results one to three days after it's received. More at icpanalysis.com. What's up, Reef Builders? Welcome to episode 100 of the Reef Therapy Podcast. Let's give it up, everybody in here. The Reef Therapy Podcast, obviously powered by ICP analysis, and we have a group of people here that have meant a lot of uh they've meant a lot to jake obviously and you know i wanted to get everybody here while we were at reef stock we're in the studio we are in this sacred spot and i figured you know what better way to celebrate 100 episodes of reef therapy right so um i wanted everybody to kind of think about if there's any moments in the podcast that you were taught something or you learned something new or something that stuck out to you because We'll go down the line. Maybe you just had a Jake story that you wanted to tell. I would love to hear that today. But I really wanted to start with Windsor here and Reef, little baby <laughs> no. Reef. I, I will say Reef. this: this is Windsor's first ever time on the Reef Therapy Podcast. Yeah. Oh, but my now. my biggest question for you is: obviously, you're around Jake a lot when he's going through his mind and wondering whether or not he should start a podcast or how she how he should do Hi, this. Baby. So, take us through what he was thinking when this thing all started. Do you think Jake told me any of that? (laughs) And the podcast is over. Thank you for joining us today. (laughs) No. Yeah, he just, one day, just like, you know, I think I'm going to do a podcast and I'm going to call it Reef Therapy. I'm like, okay, sounds good. I have a picture of him actually recording the pilot episode, like right here, right where Jake's brother is sitting, actually. (laughs) So... Yeah, it was just really special. And I just remember like going into the other room and like listening to him recording this and just like hearing the passion and hearing like the amazing conversation that he was having with Mark. I'm like, oh my God. I had no idea who Mark was, by the way. So I met him through that. And yeah, I, I'm just so proud of him. I've delivered many a beer during that, <laughs> his re therapy recordings. Oh, th- yeah, I guess. Do you want to say hi, Reed? <laughs> yeah he does um and so yeah i was basically the the beer the beer maiden during his recordings so this is also reef's first <laughs> I, I know. Reef <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we're both learning <laughs> i'm just really impressed with how you guys have continued it on and having all of you here i mean it just like brings tears to my eyes i mean this group of people jake loves so much and it's an honor to be on it with my son that I share with Jake, and he would be so proud of us. And oh my God, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and he is a challenge, just like his dad was. <laughs> Luke, uh, maybe, maybe you can speak to if, if Jake had talked to you at all about the podcast or, you know, just, just his philosophy on like educating people or, or venting about this hobby that we're in, because that's kind of where this all started, right? Surprisingly, I never really, he never shared with me, you know, in detail, like his plans of what he was planning with reef builders and reef therapy. And, um, but he would always say like, you know, I got, I got something in the works. I got something that's coming. It's going to be like, you know, awesome. It's going to take off. And yeah, I like, yeah, 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 whatever. Like, but you know, it, it took off. And when you asked that question to Windsor, the first thing that came to mind is when me and Jake lived, uh, we lived, you know, like right down the street from Coors Brewery, you could smell the hops, it was great, you know. And Mark would come, he would do these trips to come out and see Jake, and I remember seeing some of these videos where he would, you know, they would just sit there and they'd just, you know, hang out and talk, and Jake would record it, and, I mean, that was, I think, where, the, where it started, where he kind of started getting this idea of, like, you know, that people would really resonate with, you know, kind of just talking about your aquarium. So, um, it still is actually one of the coolest things that I can go to YouTube and watch those videos. Yeah. 
it's it's interesting because i i was doing a water change the other day and it, it this this podcast always accompanied me doing maintenance you know just have mark and jake on in the background talking about whatever and i was doing a water change the other day and i'm listening to jake and mark talk about the uh australia trip that they had just or that jake had just took uh for reef stock and the winds are called and i was like there's too many things happening right now <laughs> Doing maintenance, Windsor is here, Jake is in my ears. I feel like it's just been such a good companion for a lot of hobbyists, you know, just to kind of have it on, take away something, learn something. It could be the smallest thing. We were talking about, like, uh, an interesting question to ask all the veteran reefers this weekend, and that's, like, what's something that you just learned? What's, like, a Chris Meckley who's been in this hobby forever and has been in the industry forever, what's something you just learned today or yesterday? that you really don't have to have tiny snails to take care of the algae when your baby acanthophilias can't even be seen. That was a myth. That was something I learned. I mean, that's the first thing that pops into my head because we're dealing with the baby acanthos and just making sure they aren't overgrown by algae. I'm hearing from Jamie Craig's, from, from um, you know, Kerry O'Neill, that we need these little baby urchins or these little baby trochus snails so that they don't damage the baby corals when we couldn't even find the baby corals on the tiles and just by chance these astrea snails made their way into from from the floating settlement container from the side of the tank they climbed onto the styrofoam climbed into the and cleaned off the tiles for us and all of a sudden i can see babies so that was something i learned new and um, I haven't really told anybody that one yet, except for a few people here today. There you go. But that was uh, pretty <laughs> cool because it was difficult to sit there with an exacto knife scraping away from something the size of smaller than a pinhead. Yeah. Well, um, you said it, said it earlier. You said they're, I hate the word expert. Always learning. Always I was learning. never an expert. Always yeah. learning. Anybody that thinks they're an expert in this industry isn't learning anything anymore, in my opinion, because it's not a day that goes by that I don't learn something new. And it might be just something tiny that most people are like, that's oh, not a big deal. Wait a minute. It is. It, it, it all correlates together. It all creates, you know, what you are and who you are when you're taking care of these beautiful animals that we are fortunate enough to be able to have in our possession. And the ultimate goal is for them to thrive, not just survive. And that's been what I work on every time I change up what we're doing in our farm. It's to help these animals thrive and not struggle and look at their best they can possibly look. Yeah. Um, is it perfect? No, we're still evolving continuously. Yeah. And that's why I like this saying, when you do cockwasser, sit back and watch the magic happen because <laughs> it really is magical what happens when you do a cockwasser in a calcium reactor in your aquarium and you're not using a two-part solution. It's less work, it's easier, just there's so much. Yeah. I could go on for hours about different things Wait, that don't. I love. Right. I know, <laughs> just be quiet. <laughs> just tell me. But Jake and I had these conversations. Jake and I had these conversations. But I do want to. I do want to. I do want to know if Windsor. Uh, I, you might have to pop out here at any moment. Uh, so I want to. I want to get your take on this. What What are some What are some things that that Jake taught you? Maybe through reef therapy or just you know about the hobby in general. Just talking. Almost everything I know. So when I moved out here, I was in the diving world. So I was working at the downtown aquarium and then COVID hit. So I had to find a kind of a new job and I've always worked in animal care. I was a gorilla and small mammals keeper at a zoo, but I had the pleasure of working with Chris Cap at Aquatic Art starting in May of 2020. And what better place to get additional knowledge than the reef builder studio, Jake Adams. Yeah, he taught me everything, and I was listening to reef therapies that he was doing while I was doing maintenance at Chris's shop. Yeah. So, I, yeah, he taught me everything. I mean, there's not even one specific thing. It literally is everything. Do you, Chris, do you think that Windsor was a good employee or no? <laughs> <laughs> was this mic on? <laughs> no pressure. No, she was great. I, I'm surprised that, I mean, you get it all day at work. Reef, 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 then you know this, and then you come home, and then you get it from Jake the whole your time. Son, Surprised you didn't just go, okay, I'm done. I'm done with all this. I, I don't want to see any more salt water. But. Yeah, and that's what's interesting. Jake didn't make it seem like work. 
because it wasn't to him. Exactly. It wasn't work. This was his life. It was I mean, it was 24 hours a day. It was fun. He would get up super early. I'm like, absolutely not. And he would, he would already have two articles out before I even woke up. And then he was just getting going on the tanks. I mean, constantly working. He always called it, I'm going to go poke at the corals. I'm like, well, don't actually poke them. But <laughs> yeah, so that's his phrase. I'm going to go poke at the corals, meaning I'm going to go enjoy my time with the corals. And he did. He loved every second. I mean, look at this place. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of all of you. I'm keeping this going, keeping reef builders going, reef therapy going. I mean, my God, he would be so <sighs> proud if he could see us now. Like, oh, my God. Definitely, and, and definitely a shout out to Mark too. Oh, uh, you know, I mean, yes. I, I wish Mark was here because yes, you know, he was such a big part of that and brought out some of the great things that Jake could yes. bring up, and they complemented each other so well. And, and it was just great to have Mark. And it, he was in the hobby, you know, for years here, and 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 so it was always fun to see Mark too. So, yep. I know, I know, we miss him here. Wish he was on this one. Mark, where are you? I know. Mark. <laughs> I, I actually texted him last week, and he had agreed to come on a uh, reef therapy, and uh, he texted me a day beforehand, and he was like, hey, man, uh, I'm not going to be on reef therapy. I'm very frustrated because I had a tank overflow, and he was already, you know, Raj and I had, yep. had seen kind of his decline in motivation for the hobby, but it sounds like from the stories that he's told with Jake that he kind of went into hibernation every once in a while. I think he might be going into hibernation for a little yeah. bit, but that's okay because I think Mark will be back. Yeah, because an overflow is nothing, right? Like, if you've never had a tank overflow, are you even a reefer? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Right. <laughs> it's your first day. So that's right. Yes. Rob, I'm interested because, you know, you've been, you've been here from the start. You knew Jake for how many years now? Uh, since For a long time. Yeah. When he worked at the store here after high school. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. long time. What, what, did, what did Jake teach you? Or what did you take away from reef therapy? You know what Jake taught me? Jake taught me enthusiasm. And you talked about Mark going through that, that cycle. And anybody that's been doing this for a long time knows that there's a cycle that you go through with your hobby. And you lose a little interest. And uh, it's not as exciting anymore. And Jake brought that excitement back for me. And I think that was the key in uh, our friendship. I always learn something new from him. And he used to tease the hell out of me. Right. Being the old guy reefer. Um, and, you know, it was fun watching some of the things we used to do come back. Right. It's like, oh, yeah, that made really good sense. And, yeah. and it was it was quite fun. Um, and when I started listening to Rafe therapy, for me, it was watching the relationship between Mark and Jake. And so that that was the key to making, I think, that a very successful start. Yeah. yeah. And, and if one thing that we found right off the bat is that we need a lot of people to fill that fill that void. absolutely we have guests on every week you know we have to jake was so many things and i i just imagined myself i, I imagined him like sitting over here at this table and not even like preparing at all just sitting down and talking with mark while mark is making all of these notes and having all of these things <laughs> um but it was just something that he loved you, you, like you said enthusiasm and i think we need a lot more of that when it comes to the hobby you know yes I think I have his notepad with his notes and it was just a few little words. Yeah. He just, the confidence that he had, yeah. I, I could never, I, he just was able to just jump up in front of people. And just start talking. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because it really came from the soul. There's something that I'll never Here forget. The first time I came out to restock three years ago, I stayed, I hung out here with Jake and we sat here after all the lights had gone out, we kicked all the lights back on, and we sat around in rolling chairs, and him and I rolled around the studio <laughs> on the chairs, staring at every aquarium, talking about, you know, all the different corals that were in them. And, you know, I'm getting goosebumps right now because that was one of the, probably the best moments I had with Jake, him in his element, at his studio, at his creation, and, you know, just cruising around on chairs, just Talking about corals was so much fun. And um, just sitting here reminds me of that because we started right there yeah. and we went around the other side and then we went around. It was just for like two hours just talking <laughs> about the corals in the tanks and, you know, talking about what needed to be changed about this and that. And we'd actually get up and do it. 
you know, right here and there. Um, that was something I'll never forget the first time I was ever here. Say something, Rod. I was just gonna. I was just going to agree that that opportunity to just sit in Jake's creation and see the cool things that he had, and we could just sit in front of a tank for an hour and a half, right? And you and, would. Oh, absolutely. I would leave you guys to it. You do. You would. <laughs> she. She Chris was is involved. That it'd be at least five per tank. Five that's five that's right. Yes. That's, that's, so, um, I, Chris, we've got to know each other a lot over these past couple of days, um, and I know that. You know, you were with Jake in college, mm. and one of the one of the things that stuck out to me this weekend that you said is that he has been talking about this studio <laughs> since you guys met. He has, yeah. Um, in college, uh, met Jake in two thousand three. Um, so we had classes together. We had um, just free time in college, like his house, my house. Um, he's the one who got me into reefing. He had he was over the wet lab at University of South Carolina. So um Go Gamecocks. Being able to hmm? Go Gamecocks. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> Look it up. No. <laughs> Chris um, Chris, you have to tell the Merletti story. I will. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Um but yeah, rolling her and we would roll around office chairs in the wet lab oh. looking at troughs looking at the two display tanks that were in the halls really cool. um he definitely wanted a space where he didn't want the giant reef he wanted lots of little little uh <laughs> manageable systems yeah. he could specify different applications for each body of water yeah. um and that's what he had in 2003, when I got into reefing, I uh, had had a freshwater aquariums my whole life, basically. Um, set up a 20-gallon long in my dorm room, and he told me all the parameters and he, like showed me how to do it. And he asked me if everything was good, and I tested like the week before, and I was like, yeah, everything's good. And he literally threw from my dorm room door... <laughs> across the room into the 20 long and I guess he could play basketball um because <laughs> it made the water um uh uh Blastimusa Marletti and actually this trip uh I brought it back so it's over there in the flat so yeah <laughs> yeah 2003 yeah <laughs> so that was definitely a Full circle, so it was nice. Uh, similarly, I brought one of my long polyp toad stools on this trip too. Yeah, and that was that was the that was the coral that brought Jake and I together because I had reached out to him. This is one of my many Jake stories, but the first one was emailing him and saying, "Hey, I think I might have something similar to a weeping willow." And he, uh, I said, "Can you tell me some of the traits?" And he said, "Oh, no, no, no." no. <laughs> I have done many articles and videos on this. You can do the research for yourself. And Go like, learn it yourself. I didn't, but I didn't take it as like a like a dig. I almost took it as like a challenge. You know, this guy is pushing me to do something. You know, and and I did, and now I know a lot about it. And I think that was the ultimate goal there. But it's cool that that coral that we talked about is now again, you know, over in the flats right now. So that's that's awesome. Yeah, but that was two decades. <laughs> You've kept that coral alive. Yeah, that's huge. From tank to tank, from Big system, small system. That's beautiful. Oh, <laughs> uh, occasional overflow. <laughs> RO left on, you know. Did you throw it in? It's broken. It's shattered. I, I, I did not. You overestimated <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. It made it through air, fl- air travel this time, so I was, well, it was good. <laughs> so... Chris, he got you into saltwater. Mm-hmm. Luke, he also got you into saltwater. He set up a tank uh, for you? Yeah, more recently. There was a couple things I was going to go back to because sure, yeah. it was kind of funny that you guys said something about him not being prepared. And as you can imagine, for he was my best man for my wedding. Yeah. He didn't have anything written down. And he was so proud of it. He was like, <laughs> you know, I have nothing written down. And then he, he spoke, and it, it was killer. It was you know, what you'd expect from Jake. Um, so it was pretty cool. But the other story, you know, I think, I think um, Chris, you kind of made me come 
think about this. I remember during COVID, you know, COVID was such a huge thing for everybody, right? In terms of like, just what people went through. And I remember coming here, it was like maybe to the studio and it was a couple months in and it was just a weird time. And it was the coolest experience I've ever had with my brother where he took me, cause I had never done this with him before. He took me to the flats and he just started going around each coral and telling me story behind it. And it was the coolest thing. Cause he's just like, yeah, and I got this in Australia here. And then this guy right here, like, and it's just, so he went through the whole thing on each flat and just told me the story. And I'll never forget that. That was like one of the coolest experiences, you know, I ever had with my brother. So one of the things that Sanjay always says is I don't care about the scientific names or whatever. I just care about the stories, you know, all, every coral that he's yeah. got, every coral that most of us have has some sort of story behind it. You know, Sanjay's the only person that's got the sand to live on. So one more thing too, like, uh, I, you know, like I told you, I've been going back through the reef therapy sessions. And the one thing I remember in one of his sessions that he, he talked about that this was really the, the essence of the hobby was that, you know, you would help one another out and like, you'd have like a coral and you give it to somebody and then like they, they start doing reaper's it. code. Yeah. Is that what's called? Oh, okay. Reaper's code. So I remember that one as like, yeah, that was it. So yeah. Very cool. Well, I, I look, we can't go any further without taking a second to admire the man who has the most views on Reef Therapy, Mr. Thampy. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm still going back to the metrics, too, and I still see that somehow, some way, this Reef Therapy episode still gets, like, 500 to 1,000 views a month. And you guys did that years ago, a couple years ago, yeah, right? Uh, it, it was a couple years ago. Yeah, for some reason, the algorithm just glommed onto that one. <laughs> the algorithm loves them. Such an amazing trip too. I don't so know. Fun. All the vibes are right for that one. I'm not surprised. Yeah, and you know, I guess like, that's a that's a good talking point in just my first experience, you know, coming to the Reef Builder Studio, and and really talking to Jake for an extended period of time because I didn't know him very well compared to any of you guys. Um, there's a way that people present themselves online, and you just never really know what they're going to be like. And Jake was immediately yes, was. hit me with how much he wanted to talk about corals. Like he wanted to talk about nothing else <laughs> but coral. It, like very, very specifically. And I, because you, usually, you know, people like to talk shop a little bit. People maybe want to talk about other people or talk about a little bit of drama. Maybe talk a little bit about business. Who does that? Drama. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, well, that's what I, that's what I adjure, right? <laughs> but no, he was just 100% about the tanks yep. and about the corals. And the kind of the cool thing about the, the podcast format in general is that it's so long form that you just can't like fake being a character for very long and so when you have to talk for hours and hours and hours you end up just like being extremely genuine and so i think that like jake and mark just kind of talking about all these different topics it, it gets to uh, a real again genuine root for all those all, all those things all those discussions and because they've been in it forever i personally really enjoyed it because it's like this nostalgia factor uh, stuff that had happened like 20 years ago in the hobby and industry that most of the viewership has no idea about. Right. And it's kind of like their first time even hearing about some of those stories. Yeah, for sure. Um, I have a quick story <laughs> with Jake. And it, so at Aquashella, you were a part of this. I think you may have overheard this then. Um, at Aquashella, I always like to get to the after party early so that I could get my drinks before the line became increasingly longer. <laughs> and I got there, but there was one other person there, and it was Jake, sitting there alone at a table, playing Pokemon Go. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and I got my drinks, and I was like, well, I guess I'll sit next to Jake and we'll talk. And we're talking, and he's, you know, catching Pokemon and things. And he goes, hey, man. Um, what kind of constructive criticism do you have for the Reef Therapy podcast? And I go, <laughs> <laughs> now, I do have like 
20 years of radio experience, so I have, I have a little bit of knowledge in that department, so I can see why he was maybe asking me. And I go, I'm going to have to tell this guy something here. <laughs> and I go, sometimes you steamroll Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I just backed off. And he goes, okay. okay. And he took it, and I was like, I think that went okay. And I kid you not, two months later, random call, Jake Adams. He was like, hey, man. I hope you've been listening to Reef Therapy because I've been taking what you said to heart. And I was like, dude, it sounded awesome. You've done such, such a great job with that. But like, it's those little tiny things that you didn't think, but they stuck and they're in there. And um, that, was, that was probably one of my, one of my coolest Jake stories. So, um, but as, as we kind of look towards the future, I mean, Evie, you're sitting here, you're yeah. leading that ladies only Reef so Therapy proud. podcast. You've got <laughs> yeah. you know, four strong women in the hobby. And I, I love listening because I'm, I'm also, what you may not know is that I'm in the background kind of. Yeah, Remy to gets these. to hear it all. I, I get to <laughs> produce it all up. So I get to listen to their conversations and the experiences that you guys have. Yeah. Across the border. Are yeah. Awesome. We have a, we have a lot of fun on there and it's it's been really just there's been so much enjoyment I think from the ladies and it's something that we kind of all had to come to the conclusion of the other day was we will make a game plan for what we actually want to talk about and then we absolutely do not do it <laughs> every single time. I mean, we look like we totally have our complete lineup ready to go and then somehow that fork in the road happens and we just completely leave whatever it was we were going to discuss um but it turns out turning to be pretty good every time we do it um and i think that that helps our conversation flow but i do really enjoy that and i know that um you know whenever me and windsor and jake got to hang around uh we used to always discuss doing so much more with me and you yeah. getting to go do things and going diving yeah, and, and yes we're going we to do it because we're going to do a ladies dive and we're going to hang out yeah. together um because that was something that jake was like i really want to give women yeah. somewhere that you know they can have a presence and he really did have that thought a very long time ago, which was really cool. And that was something that I always thought was really unique because it's not, um, it's not every day where we get to hang out. And, you know, when we did, Jake was like, oh man, you two just get along so good. I just want you two to like do stuff together and, and, and talk coral. Yeah. But yeah, I think, well, aside from that moment, one of my favorite moments was actually when we went to Sarah Stevens' wedding. That was so fun. And me and Sean did not know anybody. And you and Jake yeah. walked through the door, and Sean and I instantly were like, I know. Oh, we, thank we God. Thing. We know somebody here. This is fabulous we're not gonna be like weird at this wedding or we only know the bride didn't even know the groom Same. yet i know we didn't know the groom yeah yet. we didn't know andrew sorry, sorry andrew sorry, sorry, <laughs> um and we got to all hang out that so evening and actually that's where i learned that jake and windsor like to play pokemon go yeah and uh jake yep. taught me how to Such quick fun. catch and told me i was yeah. terrible at it <laughs> Um, and he kept trying to teach me, and it was it was a struggle. I'm sure. You got it now. I do. I I got it now. <laughs> yep, I sure do. And we got to trade some Pokemon yeah. too. I got some cool ones for you. Oh, wait. oh yeah, totally. Anytime. Yeah, Jake was a huge Pokemon Go player. He was. Like, I don't yeah. know if you know that, but he was probably playing while he was recording Retherapy. If there was like a raid or something <laughs> going on. Oh what yeah, favorite, yeah. We used to invite him to all this. He likes the uh, Rolla Camp. Because yeah. it's like the Coelacanth. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. Snorlax. No, I love Snorlax. Oh, you love Snorlax. I, oh, I, thought, he, I thought he was bitter when you got the shiny. Because he, he tried to raid so hard one day with me raid. and Sean. He tried to raid shiny. so <laughs> hard for that. I know, but I got it. <laughs> I got the sun. So I, I got What's it. your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> I know. You, I, you seem like a Pikachu kind of you know, guy. There is a Pikachu. <laughs> there's a Pikachu near to Brock. Have you seen that? See? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about Shellos? But yeah. there's several like portals and things and that are named after Pokemon. There so. are, yeah. You know. I have no idea. I don't know. Yes. Yep. See? See, it's all intertwined. 
Sorry, guys. Oh, is that what we crammed in the car to go to, to, go to that restaurant? Like going deep in the post. Yeah. Like yeah. Back to the coral. We'd like to thank you for joining us on the 100th episode of Reeve Therapy. We'll conclude with favorite Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Pokemon in the comments, please. In 2020 at the family reunion down in the Keys, oh, yeah. he, Jake got Isaac hooked on Pokemon Go. And, um, of course, we, we would drive all over the place trying to find places where we can get, you know, Pokemon. So we'd all go in the car, and everybody had their devices, and we'd be sitting there catching Pokemon. Well, just recently, we were trying to figure out names for corals, and Amanda's like, you know what? Let's honor Jake with the Pokemon Go thing. Let's start calling. So we have Charizard. Oh, we yeah. have Jinx. Yeah, we have perfect. all these different corals that, you know, have the same colors of these, as these Pokemon. And that's all came about because of Jake. You know, if it wouldn't have been for him introducing Pokemon Go to my family, we probably would have never used the Pokemon names for naming awesome. some of the corals that we have on the, on the farm. I really feel a lawsuit coming on, so uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to move on. <laughs> cut him off. Cut him off. Um, I want to go back to Chris Cap real quick here because we were talking. We were talking at your place today, Aquatic Art, and you had said something. Uh, you had a story about Jake when he would come in with. A, with brown coral and super enthusiastic about it, but he yeah. did this a lot. He would, he would, it, it was really tough for me because he would come in so enthusiastic with this brown something that he got collected off the third island northwest of this island, you know, and I'm looking at it going, it's brown. I can't, it's not bright pink, it's not bright orange. I can't sell, you know, it, it just doesn't, it's not what a lot of the hobby is driven on, but. He was so passionate, and when you look around the studio, you see a ton of them mm -hmm. uh, around here. And it, it just was kind of, it was tough for me to wrap my head around the idea that you could be so passionate about something that wasn't bright pink or bright, you know, and that's, that's where Jake went with his head is that the rarity and the growth forms and other things yeah. intrigued him just as much as having the brightest thing in the tank, you know, it, Actually, probably even more. Yeah. He would find the nuances in the coral that he liked, right? Like it would be yeah. a strange formation or the way that the um, ridges were. Like these ridges are different than any other Slamacora. And he would be hyper-focused on like the tiniest thing that we're looking at it. Like you said, it was like, yeah, but it's a brown turd coral. Right? <laughs> but to him, it was that nuance that was, that was just everything. Yeah. yeah. I always say, like, obviously get the coral that makes you happy, that you like, that you love, that makes yeah. you want to look at your tank and take care of the animals and all of the things. Um, but I do love that uh, Chris and I have kind of carried on a tradition that Jake and Chris used to do at each, at each of the shows. And I actually just did an article on this kind of highlighting it to tee up Reefstock where we're going to do this tomorrow morning. Yes, um, can't wait. But looking at a tank and kind of looking over the the torches and the high priced zoanthids and looking at the more unique stuff that are offered at frag swaps and at coral shows. And not only to, you know, honor Jake, but also to, to learn, right? Exactly. I mean, we're in, we're in Chris's shop today and you're just geeking over the weirdest stuff. Cause that's just, <laughs> you know, that's what you and Jake did, right? We did it all the time. I mean, that was one of the things that I used to enjoy. Like, I remember when Jake was in new Caledonia with Windsor and he sends me this picture of this massive Cocinera excaza growing in the public aquarium there. And I mean, it was just the most gnarly looking growth. It was like 15 feet tall, eight feet wide. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit here, but it was just so bright. Bright. It was not like something anybody would be like, what do you like that coral for? Well, look at the growth, look at the polyp structure, who cares what the color is, you know? And that was the, like, Jake's got the garden of Sirius here. Nobody on this planet will want to buy the Garden of Sirius. It's not a very pretty coral. It's called a honeycomb coral. You know, stuff like it is. It is amazing. You know, and that was one of the things I loved about Jake. You know, he would just send me a frag with the stuff he was sending me from the studio of just something off the wall that was weird. And then he did find this gem of a Cocinera wherever he got it from. And I still have it, thank goodness. Um, that was instead of being silver, it's like toxic neon green and purple. You know, so just the weirdest, oddest growth patterns and just coral in general was something Jake and I shared alike. Um, I would, I would 
ask my suppliers to get me certain things. And they'd be like, why do you want that ugly thing? Because I like it. I just want one piece to put on my farm so I can say I have it. And then people come over and look at it and they're like, but Jake, every time he came over, be like, what well, do you got this cool? You know, and we go back and look at the sump and it was always in the sump. And we stood there for four hours one night looking at my corals in the sump of the, of the farm. And be like, let's switch spots. Then we'd switch spots and he'd be like, where did that come from? You know, and it was stuff that he inspired me to ask my suppliers to actually go and look for and find. Him and Julian were really good at that. Um, you know, Chris, can you get some of Cosanera? Can you get this? Can you get that? And I would ask my suppliers and I'd get it. And then, of course, Julian would get a piece. Jake would get a piece. I'd keep a piece. And I've got dozens of corals that will never, ever be worth a dollar to anybody in the industry. But to me, they're worth, they're priceless. They're priceless. Because yeah. they're, they're unique in their growth. And that's what I love about corals. I could, it doesn't have to be vibrant and, you know, glow under blue lights. It just has to be a coral. Unique. Unique. Yeah. It, it just needs to be, especially something that nobody else wants. I want it more. You know, and that's how Jake was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, it's something that him and I shared, and, and I missed that aspect of it because there's not very few people that I can ask my supplier to send me something off the wall that they wouldn't normally send me. You know, I can send it to Julian or send a picture to Julian, and Julian be like, where'd you get that? Like, well, you know, I just thought about it one day and asked my supplier, you want a piece? He's like, yeah, send me a piece as soon as you have it available. And I know that I can get a handful of people in this industry to geek out on it with me. But that was something I never had to worry about with Jake. It didn't matter what it was. It was yeah. just, what'd you get? Oh, yeah. dude, got to send me a piece of that. And, you know, I miss that. I miss that a lot. You know? It's kind of the, the, the balance between business and the hobby. You know, in business, you have to have bright orange or it's not going to sell. But the hobby is hmm? what, and, exactly. and he had a great balance, but he, he definitely was a hobbyist, you know, at true at heart. And sometimes yeah. as we run business in aquatic fields, we start to lose some of that because we're gearing towards the business. I mean, it's really, and so he, he always had that balance, you know, but he was still a hobbyist, you know, um, with that. Absolutely. My manager says to me all the time, why do you keep this coral? Because I like it. Because <laughs> I like it. That's all I care it. about is because I like it. Well, That's all you should worry about. Too. And the story's there. You know, right. even though it's brown, there's still the story. And, and exactly. that makes it, um, it yeah. doesn't have to be bright at that point because you have exactly. the story. So, yeah. I was just going to, was this ever weird for you to like, you know, you're kind of on the outside of the hobby per se, but leave all, all these people here have been affected by your brother. Is it weird to like to hear? He's the story? like celebrity status. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I, I learned that I think it was two years ago when I went to Reefstock because, you know, he, this is how many years is this now? 11, 12, I forget. 16. 16. Yeah, yeah it's quite a few. And I remember, you know, I, in the beginning, I, I, I think I I'd only missed one maybe. And so I went to every single one. But, you know, I was like, just kind of, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. Like, I never really understood and then two years ago when i i think i was just talking to some vendors and then they were like you know i, I said something about oh yeah jake's my brother and they were like what do you know <laughs> what this guy's done for the industry like, this and then he would they would like you know and then i that happened more than once and i was like hey it's like a, there's something to this right what's going on this is like my brother you're talking about and then it, it all kind of clicked after that how how much of an impact he had you know and the industry is all and that's all I see ever since, you know. Yeah. So it's worldwide at that. It's not just the U.S., you know. It's worldwide. Yeah. People know who Jake Adams is everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, that's, you know, I can't imagine what it's like for you to find all that out and just to understand that your brother, the guy that I grew up with that I used to, you know, punch him in the arm and run or whatever, you know, <laughs> sibling rivalries, whatever. I mean, it's, it, I can imagine how that's, you know, Wow. I'm pretty you know, sure it was the other way, right? Jake was the one playing. <laughs> <one. laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, if I, if I may, uh, I had kind of the same revelation, even though I've been to almost every Reefstock. Um, but when I went to Reefstock Australia, um, you know, I knew Reef Builders was worldwide, the internet. But he walked into the venue in the Reefstock Australia, and he was as big of a celebrity there as he was here. Wow. And I was kind of sitting there going, but this is Australia. You know, I know <laughs> nobody here. 
but they were all like, I hear people go, oh, that's Jake Adams over there. I'm like, how do you know that? You know, of course, <laughs> Internet and Reef Builders was worldwide. It was my experience of having how big of an impact, not only in the United States or in Golden and Denver, but worldwide. And it was, it was pretty amazing to see that. Yeah. That's the first thing I told my wife when I talked to her that night. I'm like, they know him really well out here, you know? <laughs> Chris, you were going to say something. Yeah, I was just going to um, remember, like, walking around in shows with him. Um, and he would he would always ask me, like, what am I seeing? And then he would point out the the coral that he's seeing in, in the different flats. And he was like, buy that one. Trust me. <laughs> and it was the growth pattern. Because yeah. cut glued on a plug this big you're not going to see that but then it would be the honeycomb the the correlate pattern the it would the branching the what whatever it would be i'll be like yep thanks jake (laughs) we'll never steer you wrong no he always had that impressive and like amazing foresight yeah like with with everything and him and i had a lot of conversations like business stuff where it was like you should make this product and you should make that product yeah and I was always like, Jake, that's so dumb. Nobody wants that. And that's <laughs> now I, I was always crushing the dream. And he he was um, he was a big fidget spinner guy. Do you remember those things? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Funny story is like a buddy of mine actually had an idea of the fidget spinner before the fidget spinner came out. And everybody that he went to told him, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Nobody <laughs> wants that. Right. So he didn't make the fidget spinner. And then Brutal. it becomes a thing. Somebody makes it. It explodes worldwide. It would have made just ridiculous amounts of money. Go back to the beginning of Reef Builders. I thought it was a terrible idea, right? I was like, nobody wants to read about your aquarium and aquarium stuff. (laughs) It's dumb. (laughs) And it became a thing. It became a huge thing. Huge thing. I was so wrong. And then Reef Therapy, I'm thinking... Do people want to hear a couple of dudes just randomly talking about aquarium stuff? That can't possibly work. That can't be a thing. And the, I just, it's hard for me to like really imagine, right? That he knew that it was going to have that kind of effect on people and that kind of impact on people. Like they were, they were going to connect with him and Mark in such a way that they're going to look forward to every single episode and hang on every word and just sit there for an hour, two hours, three hours, listening to a couple of dudes <laughs> talk about aquarium stuff. That's yeah, amazing. It's, it really is. Yeah. So the moral of the story is don't listen to Roger's ideas. <laughs> <laughs> He's got pretty terrible ideas. Look, I got great ideas. I'm just going to crush yours. <laughs> Dream crusher. God. Um, I wanted to go down as we kind of start to wrap up here. It's going to take us a little bit to get down the line. But one thing that you learned from reef therapy or that Jake taught you because he was a teacher at heart, right? So we'll start with Luke, your uh, Jake's brother. So to that question, uh, a buddy of mine from work that um, back to, you know, like his, his, um, popularity, mm-hmm. like, you know, somebody I worked with actually said, you're Jake Adams' brother? It was like the weirdest thing, but I, I, um, he, he told me the reason that he gravitated so much towards Jake's, you know, content that he was creating was that he would just geek out. He would just like, you know, and I, I watched a video recently where he was going over this tank right here, this peninsula, and it was just, you know, he would go through each coral and he would just, you know, talk about it. And then, you know, obviously, I'd be remiss to talk about his, you know, uh, emphasis on the correct, you know, naming of the corals. But he just went around and, um, like you said, he just, that was what he was about, was teaching and and making it fun. And, um, yeah. So I think that that, that's probably the biggest thing that um, I have a lot of years still to to watch, you know, his content, his his YouTube videos and his reef therapy. And um, I'm looking forward to it. Chris Cap, you know I think my one of my takeaways from Jake there are many 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 but as a, a reef keeper that's been doing it for quite some time is that 
you get in your your ways. You do things a certain way, and you always do it that way. And I think that when I would have conversations with him, it, a lot of it would be, you know, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? And he was always trying to get to, you know, to improve things, you know, upon what my base was. But it's always just a little bit more and a little bit of tinkering. And uh, and it, you know, I would go, no, I'm not doing it that way. And then, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and then I would get home and go, okay. Yeah, maybe I should try yeah. something like that, you know, and then, you know, it would set in and then I'd, I'd have to process it a little bit just because the hesitant, you know, I was hesitant because I've been doing things the right way or the right way, the same way. And so I think that was my biggest takeaway. It kind of pushed me a little bit further in, in some things that I did. Raj. <laughs> <laughs> to be fully passionate. Mm. Right. Yep. Jake. He was fully, fully passionate about what he did. Mm -hmm. And one of my, he was like a little kid. And I remember he did, he did this video where he's talking about aquascaping this, this small cube. And he's talking about putting sand in the aquarium. And it, that's just such a simple and not exciting thing to do. But the level of excitement that he had of putting the sand into this tank and sloping it from back to front. It was an old freshwater trick. It, like, it was so fun for him that you could see it. Like, it just exuded his body. And, like, if, if you're doing tank builds or you're doing your own tank or whatever it is, that's not an exciting part of the project, but putting sand in the tank. But he found so much beauty in every single bit of it. And I am so envious of that, that we let these things just go in our lives. We take for granted all of these little things and all these big things that should be just fully embraced. You know, it's. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's rush. Agreed. Mr. Than. So one of the things that I appreciated most about Jake was just that he's been passionate about this for so long that he's seen like the really fringe, weird stuff. <laughs> so well, one of my tanks um, at my farm, we were having like a, an issue with some of the SPS and I literally just described it in like one or two sentences. Like they look kind of tight, such and such, such and such. That's all I gave him. <laughs> And he was just like, test your copper level. Oh, yeah. And it was like, because he's like, dude, I know it's not some basic issue that you're having. Because you would have caught that years ago. It's going to be some fringe thing. I bet it's copper. Ask me how I know, right? It's, you have to experience these, these one-off, one in 10,000 things and to, to really be able to diagnose that stuff so yeah i kind of i i really regret not being able to bounce ideas off of him because to to have people with like that level of experience that have been doing it forever with that level of passion it's it is a rare find chris carney yeah. who i found out your last name is perfect um Probably the biggest thing that Jake taught me, uh, this was back in college, but um, observe the tank. Use the numbers to back up your observations. Use the number to confirm the observation. So trust how the, the animal is going to respond, and it should be growing. So... Well, I'm feeling rather bad because right at the moment, at least three of the things I was thinking about have already been said. So I just want to say, say thank you. So, yeah, because you're all hitting it exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's like, no, 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 let me go I first. You're going to steal mine. So. <laughs> no, I was, as I was sitting here thinking, it was one of the things that, that, um, that he helped me understand was that it was okay to try something different. It was okay to step outside of your comfort zone of something that you want to do. And he would always push me. And I think that was the, one of the big pieces for me. 
So get me out of my comfort zone and let me try something cool. So, and up my Kaltwasser. <laughs> Reef therapy powered by Kaltwasser and ICP analysis. <laughs> Chris Meckley. Well, it was hard for me to wrap my head around overthinking certain things. And one of the things he said to me is that, you know, less is more. And it's so true. I mean, because I started doing less and less thinking and just more observing. And the less I did to my systems, the better everything got. And it helped me understand that if you're going to chase your numbers, it doesn't help you if your corals don't look good. So doing a lot less to my systems over the years when Jake and I really started getting close, I have to say that, you know, he was a big part of helping me wrap my head around some of the most basic things that nobody really thinks about that don't need to be overthought. And reefing really isn't that difficult if you just observe everything in your aquarium and if it's looking amazing, what you're doing is enough. And that's probably one of the things that I definitely will have to say is one of the things that brought Jake and I really close. I mean, it's not that hard to maintain an amazing reef aquarium. Stop overthinking it. Yeah. Abby? Well, on top of everybody else's, that definitely <laughs> yeah, was covered. The part, right? <laughs> Tapering down here to the end. Um, something that I always really valued and enjoyed hearing from Jake when we would chat is he literally never stopped reading. Yeah. He read all the time. Oh. Every time I ever would chat with him about something or ever ask him a question about, oh yeah, I read that like three days ago. I just read this a couple of days ago. Oh, you know what? On my way here, I actually read this. <laughs> and I'd be like, how do you get all this time to read? How are you reading and doing everything else? So, you know, I think that that really helped me understand that always seek out more knowledge, always seek out whatever literature that you can get your hands on, because now there is an, a, a decent amount and you always should want to read all the different things that are there and be open to reading them. Because that's the best way, it's the best method to keep yourself open to trying different things, to experimenting with your tank, and just pushing yourself and thinking out of the box. That really always stuck with me, how much he read, because he loved it. He loved to genuinely learn. And I'm so grateful that I get to give that collection of books to our son. Yes, that's going to be amazing. I, um, I guess it's my turn. Windsor. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's, I mean, what can I say, right? I mean, there's so much. But the, one of the biggest is live the life you want to live. I have never met someone like him before. I mean, he is 100% authentic himself, for better or for worse. So you either join him on his ride or you have to step back. And I am so glad yeah. he showed up to your wedding as a groomsman, Chris Carty, <laughs> because I met him there and I jumped on that ride, but it took us a little while. So, yeah, we were friends for a long time, but we've known each other now for 10 years. But the greatest gift he's given me is obviously our child, Reef Adams, who is my everything. He's a little piece of Jake I'll get to have forever and get to share all of these stories with him. And I know I'm in a very special, unique situation where I have a catalog of writings, videos, podcasts, stories from all over the world to sh so Reef will know his father since he'll never get to meet him. But I said I wasn't going to cry, but 
And your nest egg's never ending. Yeah, the nest egg's never ending, you know. <laughs> I'm just really grateful for all of you. Pardon. I'm all, I've been able to get through all this time because of all of you. And you would be so proud to see us all here carrying on this legacy. And, you know, I'm just really glad that Jay got to be the biggest thing he ever wanted to be in life, which was the father. I mean, you know, this is all great and all, but he, okay. which is, it is. But being a dad was his ultimate goal, and it really, really was. And that was the main thing that we talked about from the day we met. And so I'm so glad he is a dad. He's the best dad. And, you know, Reef is really lucky. Even though he'll never get to know him, he will know him. So thank you. Thank you for letting me be on this, <laughs> you know, and share a little bit of my story, too. For the honor of Thank you so much. Thank you, Windsor. I'm, I'm, Sorry. I, no, everybody has pretty, everybody has pretty much uh, said everything that I was going to say, but to piggyback off of, you know, what you've said about Reef, I don't know who was telling me the story, but I, maybe it was Rob. I think it, I think maybe we had talked about this, but, um, at every Reef stock or show that he was at, he always made time for kids. Yes. It's hard to think, you know, as a father now and, Keeping your kids curious, especially about all this really cool stuff. It's so complex, but it's so simple at the same time. And it's just cool that, you know, we can carry that on to the next generation. So if anybody's listening right now and you have children or children are around you, take it from Jake, kneel down and teach them. Teach them. Educate. Yeah. Because it may start here, but it may end up in the ocean somewhere. Conservation efforts, whatever, you know, so... Yeah. I want to thank everybody for, for making time. The, the impact does not end on these couches. No. There are 10 people standing off camera right now that are all here helping. Uh, and then even more people that will be at Reefstock over yeah. these next two days. And every show will come up. Jake Adams will live on forever. So, uh, again, thank you so much for coming out. And this is a hell of a 100th episode. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Let's go do what Jake would want us to do, and let's go get some Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Luis, we're on our way. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.